Hey, Rayo Daniel, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to continue with our high level video series. And this particular video, we're going to be covering calendars, how to set them up and how to get them configured inside of high level. Before we get going, I would just like to ask, please hit the subscribe, hit the like button. It really helps me out, grow the channel. And if you are interested in signing up for high level, please use my affiliate link below. It really does help me out. Thank you so much in advance. Let's get into it. Awesome. So here we are inside of high level into one of our accounts. Now, <clears throat> having a calendar in your business is pretty much essential. You want to use it for either scheduling your service, scheduling appointment calls, sales calls, bookings, whatever it is, you typically need a calendar to have an online booking so people can schedule a call with you. Now, one of the more popular calendar features out there is Calendly. Um, they do charge per user and it does get quite pricey. Um, uh, whenever you you know you have lots of users on your sales force but high level one of the many features that high level has in their platform is a completely extensible calendar feature built in for all of your team members you can create unlimited number of calendars for unlimited um, amount of times and they have a, a really a great way of configuring this whether you have uh, like if you want to configure it online with your website and high level you can if you want to post this on another remote site they give you code to be able to post this on remote sites as well but I mean just the extensibility of this feature is awesome but let's dive into it and let's take a look at some of the features that you get so here on the account we want to choose calendars on the left hand side now, right off the bat, I just want to explain the interface, some of the options before we kind of dive deep into like setting up calendars and some of the features of the calendar. So right now, <clears throat> here across the top, you obviously can choose the day, change the view that you want. Here you can change the calendar. As a particular user, you may have multiple calendars that you could see or access or be able to view from. For instance, you could have an onboarding calendar or sales appointment calendar that you are also, you know, that could be a part of your job. But bottom line is you see all the calendars in here. Now the My Calendar is special because that's relating to you as a user. When you log in, all of the user appointments that are assigned to you show up in My Calendar. So this way, it doesn't really matter which calendar <clears throat> it's a part of, you get sort of a consolidated view of all of your listings on this particular view. So here's you can pick, you can pick um, all, you can just look at um, different appointments, block slots, change it from weekly, monthly to daily, or just manually book an appointment here if you want. Now, these are some of the options here. Across the top, you see all of your list of appointments. There are no appointments right here, but if you did have appointments, you would see a list, more of a list view of the appointments. This calendar gives you a calendar view, but this would give you a list view of your appointments. <clears throat> now, the biggest thing I want to go over is your calendar settings here. There's a couple of different calendars that High Level offers you, and there's a couple of different ways that you could set it up, depending upon whether your website is in High Level, out of High Level, or you have group calendars, not group calendars. Let's dive into it. Let's take a look. So here off the bat, we see there's a calendar tab and there's a groups tab. We'll get to groups in just a minute. Right now, if you want to go over here, we can say create calendar. Now on this create calendar type, we do get a round robin booking. Now the round robin booking is typically going to be in your group calendars. Um, so we're going to cover that in a bit. But there's also what they call an unassigned booking. Now the unassigned booking, uh, I personally, just my personal preference is I don't really recommend it. But it can be useful in your situation depending upon your situation. Now an unassigned booking is limited in the sense that you cannot add users specifically to a booking. So when somebody comes in and wants to book a schedule, an appointment, they can typically get assigned to any particular sales team that's configured in the calendar. Well, with an unassigned booking, you don't get that option. What you get is more of like an event calendar. You have a certain booking, say maybe it's an onboarding call. Let's just call it that. <clears throat> the onboarding calls are 20 minutes, but you don't really know who's going to be the onboarding person um, on call or doing it that particular day or week. So you can create an event, create a calendar that people can sign up for, but then afterwards you have to go in and manually accept or assign that uh, appointment to somebody on your team. So right now what that involves, um, and we won't go, we won't have an example in this video that goes over it, but Basically, here's what's going to happen. Somebody books an appointment with an unassigned calendar. 
it gets put on the calendar, but it also notifies. There's a notification method that you can have behind the scenes, either built into the calendar, or actually you can create a custom workflow to have a custom uh, configuration that you want. But basically you can alert or notify either like a sales manager, an onboarding manager to say, hey, we got a new onboarding um, appointment please you know, go and assign that to somebody so they know it shows up on their calendar and you have to do it manually. That's really the biggest difference between an unassign and uh, using a round robin calendar. The other collective booking calendar that you see here is a feature they're coming out with, but they, they haven't uh, released that quite yet. So we're just gonna be talking about the unassigned booking and the round robin. <clears throat> now for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna show you what a pre-configured unassigned calendar is. And I'm not going to really go into that much depth, but I do want to at least show you what it is so you can recognize the difference. Now, when you create an account in high level, typically most of them come with this free gift card claim uh, calendar. It's kind of like a, a built-in one that you can go and modify and change. But let's just take a look at that real quick. We're going to go ahead and edit this calendar and take a look at it. Now, some of the elements that you see on the calendar are what you would expect. You would give it a name, give it a description, this calendar URL, it basically just needs a unique link to identify every calendar because you will be accessing this calendar online, in which case, you know, calendar URL, sometimes they call it a slug, but it's just a, a, a unique URL for every particular calendar. Now the widget type, here's one of the changes that they have made recently. You can do a classic or what they call a Neo. You can play with it, but basically if you just put this widget on your website, it gives it a different look and feel. That's all. So you can play with it and see which one you like. Right now, we're just gonna leave it as classic because we're just doing a simple example. The appointment title. So when somebody books an appointment, what does the title show up inside of the calendar? So typically it will show the contact name, but here's where you should edit it to say, and again, we were using the onboarding, so you can just simply do something like um, onboarding call. And it would just say John Smith dash onboarding call. That way, when you uh, when you look at that particular event on the calendar, like whoever you assign it to, they will know what that event is. They'll know it's an onboarding call and they'll know the person's name. So that's great. Meeting location. Um, this is where it gets a bit tricky because right now, when you manually assign this to somebody, depending on how you have your meeting set up, you could use Google Meet a link, you could use Zoom link, you could use any other type of webinar, you know, web communication tool that you want, but you would have to put that link in here. And most of the time, those links are going to be specific to a particular user that it's assigned to. So typically, whenever it's assigned to a user, the user then has to go in and get that meeting location configured in order for uh, it to show up on the recipient's appointment site. So you can choose a color, how you want it to show up on your calendar. Now, this is a nice feature. Every user inside of High Level has the ability to connect um, their either Google or Outlook account to um, High Level. So they create what they call a link inside of their personal settings, and we won't, won't do that here in this video, but just inside of the user setting, they can log, when they log in, they'll go to the, what they call integration settings <clears throat> and integrate it with their Google. They'll just log into Google or Outlook, and it, uh, High Level now has a link to that calendar. So what you can do is you can actually create a link. So when somebody uh, books a calendar, you can link that to your personal Google or Outlook calendar so that it shows up there and you don't have to come into high level and look at the calendar there. It can synchronize to your personal calendar, which is nice. So right now we don't have anything, but if you looked, if there was a link calendar here, you'd be able to select it and link, link to it. One of the other nice things is you can set up um, one-way or two-way um, syncing. So what this means is that one-way syncing means that any new appointment that comes into the high-level calendar, that appointment pushes to your personal email. Now in a two-way sync, just, uh, just as what you would think, high-level pushes into your personal calendar, but when you create a, a personal event on your calendar, that event in turn can push and synchronize your high-level calendar. Now, why would you wanna do that? You would want to do that, let's just say if you had a, a dentist appointment and you wanted to make yourself unavailable between 1 and 3 p.m. on a certain day. Well, you can go ahead and um, create that on your personal calendar, 1 to 3 p.m., and you can basically mark that event private. 
And then that way, high level, when it comes into high level, it won't show the details. It'll just show a block missing. But <clears throat> the importance of that is high level will see that as an unavailable time and not allow people to book that day and those times um, for you. Like you're unavailable during those times. That's one of the benefits of setting up a two-way sync. So that's one way to, um, to set it up. And if we go to availability, here are some of the other configurations. And I'm going to go over this because these same configurations are true on the round robin or the group calendars as well. So the appointment slot configurations. Uh, slot duration. How long do you want the appointment for? Okay. So the slot interval, you might want to pick... Um, either 30 minutes, you might want to make it longer, but this is like the interval that the it will book you on the calendar for. So let's just say this one, the slot duration is 30 minutes. The slot interval is 30 minutes. Now the buffer duration, the, the buffer is the, the amount of time in between appointments. Now the way this is set up, I don't really recommend it because what this will do is it'll book slots every 30 minutes. So if you, um, if you're open up at 8 o'clock, you know, so there'll be 8, then there'll be another one at 8.30, 9 o'clock, 9.30. And basically, there's no no uh, time difference between ending one call and beginning the next. So if you can imagine it, you know, you have an 8 to 8.30 meeting and then an 8.30 to 9 meeting with zero time difference to, to sort of close out one phone call and start another one or go to the bathroom or get a drink of water or something like that. So... That's probably not something that I would recommend. Um, at least give yourself some kind of a break. So the buffer duration is where you can sit back and put in like 10 minutes. So if you put in a buffer duration of 10 minutes, then you would begin at like 8 to 8.30. Then the next appointment wouldn't begin until 10 minutes after that. So 8.40 to whatever 30 minutes after that is when it would book it to. And you kind of get the point. It'll offset that by the amount of your duration, giving you time in between the appointment to do what you need to do in case you go over on the previous appointment and it you know, gives you some time to kind of get refreshed for your next call. So that's kind of what those are, appointments per slot. Now here's where, if you're doing an unassigned calendar, you can't really assign multiple appointments per slot. I wouldn't recommend it because right now being unassigned, for instance, if you had a group calendar and you had 10 people on the calendar, well, if somebody wants an appointment at one o'clock in the afternoon, guess what? You've got 10 people that can satisfy that slot. Do you see what I mean? So you've got 10 people that can all meet at 1 p.m. So on this kind of case for that, that situation, your appointments per slot may be 10 because you've got that many people and that many slots available and you might want to book an uh, appointments per day. So you might want to max it out at, depending on where you're at, five appointments, 10 appointments per day. And after that, you're done. That's the most that you're going to be able to book, period. You can set that in here. Now, the scheduling notice is something that's very nice because this goes back to how you prepare for your meeting. You, you don't want to leave this blank because what this means is that wherever you're at, somebody can book an appointment for, I mean, let's just say 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, what happens if um, they book that at 7.30 that morning? So 7.30 that same day, they book an 8 o'clock session, and you did not know about it. You looked at your calendar the night before as the user. You didn't see any appointments at 8 o'clock, but somebody booked it at 7.30, and now you've got 30 minutes to be notified, to look at your email, text message, whatever it is, to get prepped, to get on a phone call, and get ready for that meeting in 30 minutes. May not be the best thing that you want to do. So here's where you can sit back and give a certain amount of notice. You could be an hour. It could be two hours. It could even be 24 hours. But regardless, this is how quickly somebody's allowed to make an appointment on your calendar. So you can specify either hours, days, weeks, months. You know, don't be crazy with it, but you get you get the point of what you can use it for. Now, duration range, this means how far in advance they can actually schedule this. Do you want them to go out five days, seven days, 30 days? Well, you might want to have a limit um, on this of when, how far out they can book an appointment. So this is where you would set that. You know, you could put five days, seven days, whatever it is that you want. But you can have a limit of how far they can schedule something in the future. Now here, um, underneath office hours, you would just simply put your, your availability for somebody on your staff or team to respond to that call or have an appointment. So here, right now, it's booked from 8 to 5. 8 to 5, if you wanted to, let's just say you want to click on this and change this to 9 o'clock. Um, if we up, oh, sorry about that. 
change it the wrong direction here. Uh, we want to go to 9 o'clock. So we do 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Rather than having to go change it all uh, through all of them, you could just simply click Apply All. And now all of the days get changed to those same settings, just saving you time. So that's all. So this right here is a good way to change it to 9 to 5. And right now you can enable whether or not you want reoccurring appointments. So the ability for somebody to sit back and have a weekly call at that time and book those weekly calls, you can turn that off and on here. So finally, on the confirmation screen, this is when somebody actually books an appointment. What do you want to do? Right now, there's a standard form that's used for collecting data. It can be just name, um, name, message, email, or something like that. Well, if you wanted to, and if this was a very specific call for onboarding, you might want to collect additional data regarding that. So you might want to create a specific form that asks for more information. So <clears throat> it could be, Give me your name, give me your phone number, give me your email, give me your referrer, like who referred you for this appointment. I need you to fill that out. I need you to answer a question like, you know, how long have you been using this software or how long have you been a member of this group or something like that. But you might want to know that information before you have the appointment call because that way it could just save you time. You don't have to gather that data on the call and waste time. You gather it up front before they schedule it. You can take a look at it and now you're already aware of it when that appointment happens and you can move forward with it. So here's where you can choose the particular custom form to choose. Now, sticky contact, this is nice because if you have that selected, which it is by default, it means that if they fill out one form on your site, the next time they go back, that same name, phone number, email address, all that information will be saved on their computer. And the next time they fill out the form, it'll automatically populate the form for the appointment. They won't have to fill it out again. So it's a nice feature. So notification on additional information here, who gets the acknowledgement email, the contact. Um, and if you look at the emails, um, this is where you, know, you can enter a single email address to receive alerts. So this is where you can set back and notify the people, hey, here's an email with your contact information, maybe a link to download the appointment, so forth. So here's some other options, let the calendar auto confirm my appointment. This is nice because if you don't auto confirm, then the problem is, is that the appointment sits there and doesn't get booked until somebody responds and goes through it and says, yep, we have somebody for that appointment time. I'm now going to confirm it. And then that could be hours or it could be even a day later. Well, the person might have already scheduled something at that same time and it could cause a conflict. So right now, if they book the appointment, then you just want to auto confirm that that appointment's already booked and you may want them to be able to just do that automatically. Allow the Google Calendar to send invitations or update emails to invitees. That would be a good thing. So you can get that email notification. It sits back and says, you know, hey, add this to your calendar. <clears throat> you can choose whether or not you want to allow to reschedule or cancel. Those links are included. Um, Here's some of the things that show up in the additional notes if you take a look here. So inside, when they download that calendar appointment, not only will they have the meeting link and things like that if configured, but they'll also get the phone number, the email uh, for the, um, the contact, and links to reschedule and cancel if they need to. So they don't need to contact you if they need to cancel it. They can cancel ahead of time so you get notified and it gets removed off your calendar. So that's great there. There is some ability to sit back and use Facebook Pixel ID. Um, I don't have a lot of information about that. That's just me, but you can um, track that if you want to have a pixel related to, you know, doing perhaps bookings or conversions. And then um, any particular custom code, if you look at this, you can enter custom code for what you want logged into the calendar to load. I don't do anything like that myself. Now, the great thing is whenever they submit it and they, they submit that form and at the very end of it, you can actually have them redirect to um, a particular form, like a URL page with a thank you page. You could do that if you want to, but now you have to build another page for that. Or you can just simply click on this. It says, thank you for your appointment request. We'll contact you shortly or add whatever custom field you want. And then they just get displayed with a custom thank you message. So right now, those are some of the uh, fields that you get with the calendar that you can get and you can configure. So now that we've gone through that, what are some of the challenges of getting appointments scheduled? Well, what happens when you want to have a group of people, but the group of people, it could be a sales team, are responsible for different types of calls? Here's where you get to be challenged um, on this one here. So right now on 
Calendly. Calendly handles this differently. If you ever go there, you know, you might have 15 minute onboarding call. You could have 30 minute strategy call or one hour client call or something like that. So those are multiple different call types that you can have. And each one of those, you know, typically in high level gets assigned to a specific calendar. So here's what I want to show you. Um, on this particular case, um, I've created a, a massage client. So imagine if you're a massage therapist and your services, you provide an hour, 90 minute or 120 minute massage. Well, typically when you log in and you ever get a massage, you have to choose what time interval you want. And then you would pick the day to see if that particular slots is available. So here on the calendars, I've already created sort of a 120 minute massage, 60 minute and 90 minute. Notice on the groups, they're already configured to the massage calendar group. So under groups, you can create a group. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this. When you create a group, it's very it's a very simple process. You just give it a name, a message, and you have to have a custom again URL for the group. Now, when you when you do the groups, the individual um, calendars that are in that group are slightly different because those are round robin calendars and not unassigned calendars. So let's take a quick look at one of those calendars. So. You're going to see a lot of the same settings as unassigned calendar, but you do get this appointment distribution area with the round robin calendar. This is why I recommend using this calendar over on the unassigned calendar because this booking can get assigned to somebody immediately and doesn't require a follow up by a manager to manually assign it to somebody. And that could possibly be a bottleneck for you. So here, right now, you see we have Jane Smith and John Smith. I know, original names. But um, here we've got these two people that are set up inside of the system as available people to provide a massage. Now, right now, we can have two options, optimize for availability or optimize for equal distribution. So notice what happens when we do this. Optimize for availability, we get priorities. Optimize for equal distribution, we don't. Now, equal distribution means Jane got one, John will get the next, Jane gets one, John gets the next, and so forth. So equal distribution is how you handle that. Now, on your team, you could have primary people and you could have backup or secondary people on your team um, that in case there's a large number of appointments, you may want uh, to have additional secondary members on your team pick up appointments. So if one week you don't have very many sales calls, the primary people can handle all of them. But if you get a large volume of sales calls, it's not like you want to not take them and push those sales calls off to the next week, potentially losing the sale. You want to make sure that that overflow of people can get assigned to the next particular person. So in that kind of case, what you do is you set priorities. So here, if you look at it, you have high priority, medium, and low. Right now, if we wanted Jane as the primary person, like let's just say we wanted her calendar to get full first, okay? So we wanted her to be completely filled in every way possible. We would set her at a high priority and then set John at a lower priority. Doing so will then allow the, uh, the system to say, okay, Jane gets first pick of everybody. We're not gonna do equal distribution. If Jane's available, we're booking her. If Jane's available, we're booking her. But I'm not going to say no to appointment. Um, if they want to book it at the same time Jane is unavailable, I'm going to give it to John because I don't want to lose that sale. I hope that makes it kind of clear. That's how the optimize for availability works. Now, doing a massage is, is a little bit differently on this um, setting here. You see we can connect Meet or Zoom um, with this Google Meet or Zoom. For a massage therapist, you're not going to meet on Zoom. So for this meeting location, this is where you can simply maybe put the address of the massage location. But if this would be an onboarding call like we talked about, then we could still use the same high priority, medium priority, but we could sit back and say connect via Zoom. Now, we don't have the integrations here, but we talked about integrations earlier when each user can connect their Google Calendar. Well, each user can then connect their Zoom account to their user account. They can connect their Google Meet account to their Google account and create a synchronization there. When you do that, then you can simply choose um, Google Zoom or connect Zoom. Notice that Jane does not have her account connected, so she would have to get that connected here. And then the Zoom link would show up for her personal meeting room. You could do that, or you could just simply come here, 
copy and paste the Zoom link directly into the custom meeting location. And when you do that, that meeting location is then shared with the calendar download invitation that you give to the user who booked the appointment. So that meetup then shows up on their calendar as the meeting location. So that's kind of the difference, one of the major differences between uh, round robin calendars and the unassigned calendars is that you can do this and set up this uh, logic at the calendar level. Now, we'll just take a quick look. Notice calendar name description, the, uh, the calendar URL. Notice that because it's in a group, it does use the group name and then slash the calendar. Widget, <clears throat> the widget type, contact information is just left um, for that. Now, notice there's no integration down here on the calendar. You don't get that here because that gets automatically taken care of here with this availability. Now, here availability, time slots. This is where you can set your, your time slots available, intervals. That's still the same. Your scheduling notice, your hours of operation. Now, what I want to do is take a quick second here and slow down on the office hours. There's one other location where the office availability can determine who is selected. And each user level uh, inside of the, uh, the user account that you set up, each user has an availability option. So let's just say if on this account, Jane is only available from 8 to, eight to noon on certain days for whatever reason, um, for Mondays. So 8 a.m. to noon is the only time that Jane will be be able, you'll be able to book Jane on here. Now, all you have to do is set up her availability on her user account, come into the calendar and set its availability, and you don't have to worry about how all that stuff gets handled and scheduled because High Level Calendar does it for you. So it knows when Jane is available and not available. And it also knows when the calendar is available for a particular massage during business hours. So that way you can never book Jane, for instance, a 2 p.m. Uh, massage, for instance, which is only working 8 to noon. The calendar knows through her user availability at the user level that she's only on from 8 to noon. So that's how the calendar can track when it's available. And if that's the case, John is the only person that will get those appointments because he's the only person that's still configured that's available during that time frame in the system, even if John has a lower priority. Do you see what I mean? Just because Jane is a higher priority, if she's unavailable, the system will go down to the next available user. Now, if John is not available either, then there'll be no listings available for that particular location. Even though it's there are available options in the calendar, it won't show that because the calendar knows there's no person available at that time to schedule it with. Do you see that? All that complicated stuff that you would normally um, think about handling, High Level does all that for you. And... If somebody schedules a 60 minute, 90 minute, 120 minute, well, they're all different time intervals. So you obviously can't have equal number of those throughout the day because they're different times. Well, high level handles, it knows if it's looking for a 90 minute slot, it'll give you the next 90 minute slot it sees. Whether that be today or the next available day, it will be able to determine that itself. All you have to do is plug in what service calendar it is, how what the service is going to be, and high level does all of that back in complicated configuration for you. It really does make it nice and simplified. So last but not least, I want to go with the confirmation. Here's the same type of information that you will see um, on this. So it's the same type of message as we had with unassigned calendar. So this is how you can create multiple calendars and then put them into a group. Because when you do that, you can put users into that group and have high level do all of the configuration for you. So it'll never book a 120 minute massage when you're not available. It'll do conflict checking. You can have synchronization between your um, group calendar and your personal calendar so that you can have that syncing um, go there. All of that stuff is handled by high level. So those that's one of the great things just about having the calendars and then setting up the different groups. Now, using groups, I would recommend using groups for different types of services that you have. Now, one of the things I want to show you how you can configure this on the website, and I'm going to do that here in a little bit once we get finished with this screen and some of the other options that we can configure, but uh, it's just a nice way of being able to combine multiple different service type calendars in a group with certain people and then have high level just do its magic and, and figure out all the calendaring behind the scenes. So here, <clears throat> if we want to create a group, um, notice uh, it's not very hard group, group name description. Once you have a group, 
you would just simply come into this particular um, calendar. Now, I do want to make sure that you understand if you do edit this, you cannot add um, unassigned calendars to, um, I believe, to a group. Uh, it's just your round robin. Round robin is the one that uh, that works. <clears throat> also at the top here for calendars, there's a few other preferences I want to sit back and go over here. This is just the main calendar screen and the way that looks. So preferences, you only have to do these once, but you need to set what um, like what your week starts on, what language, time format. Do you, do you want regular? Do you want military time? And when is your week start? So here are some of the options that you could set on how the calendar looks and like how the calendar will start. Your availability. This right here, they're adding this new feature in where you can sit back and look at um, the availability that we talked about between users and calendars, but that's coming soon, but they already got the tab up here for you. And then lastly, your connections. This is important because right now, one of the other features that um, I have not talked about yet is what they call a text to pay feature. Now, I'm not going to go over this. You could watch the video on the channel for text to pay. But right now, if you, and let's just say you're booking a massage and you require, um, whether it be a massage or you're even onboarding, regardless, if you require somebody to pay for that before you have the appointment, you can do that. You can specify, hey, um, you're going to create the calendar, but I'm going to send you a payment link. That payment link has to be paid for, and you can do all that um, in high level. But in order to do that, you do have to connect your Stripe account to be able to do that. So here's, we don't have a Stripe account connected on this sub-account, but you would have to connect that in order to use the text-to-pay feature to get a payment first before that booking goes um, live and gets committed. So that feature is available. So right now, one of the, um, that's really the calendar is it. I want to kind of show you some of the settings. If you're looking at it on the website, I do have an example here for uh, uh, sort of a, a massage. There's a scheduling page here that I want to show you. Now on this, um, one of the nice things is you see there is um, inside of high level, if we were to go through and add an element, one of the nice things here, if we take a look at this, um, is this nice calendar feature. So we don't have to like copy code if we're using our website within high level. We just simply add a calendar to it, and this is what we get. So we get add a calendar. From here, it just has a calendar name, but here you can choose what type of calendar to use. So here we get a list of all the calendars that we saw on the main screen. So we can pick between um, this screen. So here's the 60-minute massage. Here's the 120-minute massage. But... What if we don't want to show that screen that's showing this on the scheduling page is limited because then people can't choose what service type it is. They can't choose a 60, 90, or 120 minute massage. They can't do that. So right now what you want to do is you want to hear on the page, see if I can zoom in here, you want to use group page. So you turn that on and if you scroll back out, now you get this nice view here where you get, you get to let them choose what type of calendar they want to choose first before it goes into there and does the booking. So this is the advantage of using groups because now you can use this little group add-on here and have this configured. And when you do this, now if you go into the um, preview page, if you schedule the appointment, now you see you can pick 120 minute, 90 or 60 minute. Well, if you book 60 minute, it takes you into the 60 minute calendar. If you go to schedule appointment, you come back here, you can choose 90, it takes you to the 90. So it gives you the option to choose which one you want to go into. Then when you go in here, you can pick whatever calendar. Now, all the appointment times that you see here, these are all determined based upon several factors that we already talked about. User availability, office availability, um, appointments that are already on the books that may have already been scheduled. There's multiple different things that high level looks at to generate the schedule, but right now we don't have any appointments. So pretty much all of them are open. But creating a group is a way of just being able to connect multiple different services together for different onboarding calls for different groups of people, and then having somebody select that whenever they uh, go to the particular website. Now, what, what I want to show you here is um, that's just what it looks like from the web page when you're dealing with high level. But let's just say you're not dealing with high level. Let's just say you're dealing with an external website. Um, it could be a WordPress site. Take your pick for anything else. But now you want to get you want to put that calendar on a third party website. Here's how you do that. So you go here under calendar settings 
And if you go to groups and you want to sit back and um, put this group calendar on here, you click on these three dots. Notice you have copy embed code. Copy if you want to have a link to it. You know, you so you may want to uh, just create a link on your website that links over. You might want to put an embed code so that you have all the calendar features on there. These are several of the different options that you can uh, that you can have and um, choose this particular embed code. Copy and paste it on your website. Now that code is available um, on the site and you're up and you're good to go. So I hope this really kind of went over the calendar, the calendar features of high level. Hopefully if you're uh, booking it with a team, this is good enough to help you understand whether you want to unassign or a round robin calendar, help you to create different groups, things like that. I hope you find it useful. And again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'm going to be putting out a lot of different content on high level and how this software can be used in your business to help you succeed and lower your overall operating costs. If you are going to look at buying high level, please use my affiliate link below. I do get credit for that. Thank you so much and have a great day. Hey, I want to thank you again for visiting my channel and give you one more little thing here. If you are interested in high level and getting some additional high level training, please see the link in the description below. I do have a free course I'm offering that covers everything related to high level and gives you all the information that you need to know. Thank you so much and have a great day.